Good morning, church family. It's good to be with you on this 3rd of December. I don't know about you, but I love the holiday season. We just finished up last week with Thanksgiving, and now we are beginning to lead into Christmas, and there's going to be so many family gatherings with friends. It's just, just a blessed time. I love it. And I don't know about you, but I love to see family I don't get to see all year long. And I don't know about you either, but my family is pretty diverse. We have a pretty diverse family tree. A lot of us grew up different backgrounds, but it's so much fun. Uh, to hang out. In my family, we have a few that are actually troublemakers, and sometimes when we get together on the holidays, it can be chaos. And I don't know if you knew this, but when we read the genealogy of, of Christ in, in Matthew 1, we get to see that Jesus actually has a rather diverse family tree as well. Um, Matthew, Matthew's Gospel actually sets the stage for the arrival of Jesus, our Messiah. And what it tells us is, is the different characters that go along with this larger narrative to get us to Jesus in the Bible. I love the way the Apostle Paul said it in Galatians 4, 4 through 5. He says, but, the fullness of, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoptions as sons. And so God, at the perfect time, culminating in human history, actually had his son be born. I think it's... a uh, Paul's commentary on that would just be that, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who were called according to his purpose. And so as God is working things together for, for his son to come to this earth and redeem mankind, we see just the different characters throughout his genealogy that that happens with. So characters make the story, the genealogy. Um, one thing that we see is that there's both Israelites and Gentiles in this. Matthew mentions this when he mentions King David. We also see Rahab, um, a Jericho prostitute, and Ruth, a Moabite. And if you remember, the Moabites were permanently barred from the congregation of Israel. So this teaches us uh, a couple things. One, God extends his grace beyond the chosen people of Israel and brings Gentiles into his kingdom. And praise God that he did because we, who don't have a Jewish background, can have salvation as well. Paul explained this as the mystery, and mystery not meaning something that we can't figure out, but something that God has revealed to us, when he says that the mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. And so it's actually through Jesus, Jesus' line even, that we see that God always planned to include the Gentiles, both Jew and Gentile, in his kingdom. But it also teaches us another thing, that God overcomes the effects of sin and shame as he works out his purposes. As we see these different characters in Jesus' genealogy and we see our families, we know that, there are, that, that, that sin is prevalent in both. In Jesus' line, there's a prostitute and an adulterous king. And God uses both of them to work out his perfect plan through his, through his imperfect people. And this is amazing because we are imperfect people as well. And we are lucky that we serve a God who is omniscient, that God, that, that God can see past our sins. Isaiah tells us in 46, 8 through 11, Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and, the, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country, I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed, and I will do it. And we see that in Jesus coming to this earth. As he was born into this world, as he lived a perfect life and died on that cross for us, we celebrate in that birth, and we also look forward to the hope of his return. And so as you're sitting around the table this holiday season for Christmas, talk about Jesus' family tree. Talk about the hope that you have in him. Let your family know that with, that with Jesus, he saves to the least of these. And remember the great truth that Paul describes so well in Galatians, that it is the righteous that shall live by faith. And so if we have put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord, we can have salvation. And we celebrate that God sent his son as he promised he would, and we celebrate what Christ did as he came. Revelation 5, 9 through 10, and they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slain and by your blood you were ransomed, you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom of priests of our God and they shall reign on the earth. Church family, be encouraged with the good news of the gospel and share it with others this Christmas season.